Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the uh, ligand binding domain of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so we are in the process of discussing the sort of um, uh, amino acid residues that you're going to have in the uh, binding pocket for acetylcholine. Now, we've almost given the um, game away here because we had to discuss this cation pi interaction slightly earlier than I planned, just because it came flowing out. But this is how we are going to bind acetylcholine to the nicotinic acetylcholine uh, receptor via these cation pi interactions, which are interactions which result from having an aromatic structure which has delocalized electron rings, so-called pi orbitals, with pi electrons in. And these delocalized electron rings have a negative charge, so they can interact with the positive charge on a cationic molecule, and acetylcholine is a cationic molecule. And these cationic pi, cation pi interactions, they are actually quite strong. They are stronger than hydrogen bonds. And if you remember, hydrogen bonds hold together proteins. They hold together DNA, so they're not that weak. Okay? And they are not quite as strong as an ion-ion bond. And so they're not quite as strong as an ionic bond. But they're somewhere in between the strength of a hydrogen bond and an ionic bond. So they are strong bonds. Um, so it's not a weak interaction, basically. Okay, so we've discussed tryptophan. Now let me discuss two other amino acids which can uh, be in uh, this um, cavity between the two protein subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So the next one we'll discuss is tyrosine. Okay, so start with the basic amino acid structure here. So here's the alpha carbon. Here's the carboxylic acid group off the alpha carbon. And now we'll discuss the R group of tyrosine. So in the case of tyrosine, you have a methylene group, and then you have a benzene ring. And now you can understand, if you didn't already, the um, notation that is used for a benzene ring, which is to draw a hexagon, and then this circle in the middle there. And this circle denotes this re these rings of delocalized electrons, these pi orbitals, which have uh, pi electrons within them. Okay, so we have a benzene ring, and then we have an alcohol group off. So this is the amino acid tyrosine. So clearly, it is, has an aromatic group. Okay, tyrosine, also denoted by TR, TYR, uh, is its three-letter amino acid code, and its single-letter amino acid code is Y. Okay, right. And let's discuss the final amino acid, which is going to be important in the aromatic uh, nest, as it's called, which is this center where acetylcholine is going to bind. Here's the basic amino acid structure. And this final amino acid that's going to be important is the amino acid phenylalanine. Okay, so the structure of phenylalanine is that you have a methylene group, like so, and it's a very similar structure to tyrosine. So you have the benzene ring again, but then you don't have the alcohol group. So this is phenylalanine, okay. And basically it's just alanine with a phenyl group on. So alanine is just the amino acid where you have just a methyl group off the side, and then you've just stuck a benzene ring on the end. End. And when you stick a benzene ring on something, that's known as a phenyl group. So it is phenylalanine. The three-letter amino acid code for phenylalanine is just to take the first three letters. And the single-letter amino acid code is to call it F. Okay, right. So here are our three aromatic amino acids, which are going to be found in this cavity between the two uh, protein subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so, within this cavity here, then, you have lots of ty uh, tryptophans, lots of tyrosines, and lots of phenylalanines. And specifically, there is a specific point, which I'll colour in here, okay? There is a specific portion of this cavity known as the aromatic nest, okay? Which is where the acetylcholine is going to bind. So this is the aromatic nest, okay? And this has four aromatic residues, three or four, actually, three to four aromatic residues surrounding it, 
okay, which are usually tyrosines, phenylalanines, and tryptophans, aromatic residues. Okay, and the way in which these aromatic residues are going to bind to the acetylcholine is that the acetylcholine has this cationic charge in it, this positive charge, and that is going to interact with the pi electrons in the pi orbitals of these aromatic amino acids. So the acetylcholine binds to the nicotinic acetylcholine ligand binding site by cation pi interactions. Okay, now let's have an experiment then. Let's see an experiment that is going to confirm all of this. Okay, so how can we confirm all of this? Well, actually, let me get my... In fact, I'll draw it again. Let me talk about um, the structure of tryptophan again. So how can we confirm that it is cation pi interactions which are holding uh, the acetylcholine in the acetylcholine binding site of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor? Well, there's this rather ingenious way of doing it. So, what we are going to do is we're going to gradually change the tryptophan residues, which are in that aromatic nest, okay? So, we're going to gradually deplete the electrons that are within the pi orbital of the tryptophan molecule. Okay, and if we remove the electrons that are in those delocalized electron rings, then you shouldn't be able to form the cation pi interaction, and we should see a reduction in the affinity of the acetylcholine for binding to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so how are we going to modify this tryptophan? So let me draw the tryptophan out again. So here's our pyrrole ring here. Okay, we have our nitrogen here, and then we have our benzene ring off the side here. Now, Basically, uh, you, you, you're meant to draw, uh, when benzene's in a um, bigger ring like this, you are meant to draw it with alternating double and single bonds, rather than using the uh, inside ring notation. Okay, so here's the hydrogens like so. Right, so, how are we going to remove the electrons from these pi orbitals of the tryptophan molecule? Well, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to bind fluorine molecules, fluorine atoms, onto these carbons here. Now, fluorine is an extremely an electronegative atom, very electronegative. It pulls electrons towards it. The nucleus of fluorine is extremely good at pulling electrons towards it. So. If we attach fluorine atoms onto this uh, benzene ring of the indole ring, okay, then gradually, as we attach more and more, we're going to be pulling more and more of the electrons out of the pi orbital and, um, and onto the fluorine. So we're going to be depleting the pi orbitals. So the pi orbitals will have fewer pi electrons. They will have less negative charge. So the in ability of them to interact with the acetylcholine will be reduced. So we should see a lower affinity of acetyl for acetylcholine binding to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors where we have modified the tryptophan residues within the acetylcholine binding site. Okay, so... To just go further, I just want to discuss how we label the carbons on this, um, on this tryptophan molecule. So firstly, this carbon here is labelled as the alpha carbon, because it's the first carbon off the carboxylic acid group. Then this carbon off the alpha carbon is known as the beta carbon. And then the numbering system for the um, indole ring is completely separate from that. So we start off with the nitrogen, we call that the first element of the ring. Then this one's the second third, and this one is not the fourth, it's the free A for some reason, then fourth, then fifth, sixth, seventh, and then again sticking to this A convention, this is 7A. So the ones which are in the middle of these two rings are for some reason labelled as A's rather than going on to the next number. I don't know why. Organic chemists may be able to tell me, give me some decent reason why. If you do know why, please do leave a comment. I would be delighted to know why. Okay, right. So, um, basically, 
we are going to create progressively um, progressively um, more modified versions of tryptophan where we're sticking on more fluorines. Okay, so in the first one we're going to use, which is just going to be F-trip, okay, so this is fluorinated tryptophan. Remember I told you that TRP was the uh, free letter code for tryptophan, just this amino acid here. And what we're going to do to this one is we're just going to add on one fluorine atom in position 5. So we're going to take this hydrogen off and we're going to stick a fluorine atom in. Okay, so this one's going to go first. We're going to put a fluorine there instead of the hydrogen. Okay, then we have what's known as F2 trip. Okay, and in this one you have two fluorine atoms. One remains in position 5, so it's a modification of the one we've already got. And then we're also going to put one on position 7. Okay, so this one is the one that's going to go next. So we're going to have the purple modification, and then we're also going to add in the blue modification. So I will just show this, colour code this. Okay, so we're gradually progressing up. This one now has two fluorine atoms, one there, one here. Then F3 trip, okay, F3 trip has fluorine on position 5, 6, and 7. So this one is another step up. Okay, we're going to take off this car hydrogen here and add a fluorine on there. And finally, you have F4 trip, and you may well be able to work out which one we're going to do next. We're going to do 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so we're going to take that hydrogen off there and add a fluorine on instead. And what we should see is if we replace the tryptophan in the aromatic nest with these progressively uh, more depleted uh, tryptophan molecules. So as we get put more and more fluorines on, as we go down to this F4 trip, the number of electrons that are in the pi orbitals is just getting lower and lower, basically. So their ability to form interactions, to bind with to acetylcholine via these uh, cation pi interactions is going down as we go down. So we should see a lower affinity uh, for, for uh, binding to acetylcholine, basically, as we go down. Now, that is indeed what you see if you replace these tryptophan molecules in uh, the uh, aromatic nest with these progressively modified tryptophans. But I want to describe to you how it is that they actually managed to do this, because it's actually a fascinating uh, experimental technique, a really, really clever way of doing this. Because when you think about it, how on earth did they sit just replace a single tryptophan in this entire protein? How did they manage just to replace one? Why didn't weren't all the tryptophans in this protein replaced? How could they just replace one? How do you do that? Well, I'm going to tell you how in the next video.